Hi, this is Gloria, Life Coach. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Hi, this is Ron Johnson, your Life Coach, Leadership Coach, Motivation Speaker, and Health Coach, and welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Today, we're going to have a special guest, and a special guest is someone that's near and dear to my heart. He's actually named after me, and uh, he's going to carry on legacy for the rest of Johnson family, and he's my son, and he's an amazing person. He's intelligent, he's respectful, he's a football player. And he lives in Georgia, and he, he's excited about his future. So, Ron, take it away. Tell us about yourself. Hey, I'm Ron Johnson. I'm 17 years old. I play football. One thing I like to do is hang out with my friends, op- open my soul to everybody in the world. S- second, I love to do math. That's my favorite subject to do. Third, one thing I love to do is read books. That's one thing I love to do, read books. And, Just like your dad. <laughs> <laughs> and last thing I like to do is... It's have fun with people, meet new people in the world and see what they like to do in their own um, adventure. Nice. Look at that. I love now, that. Now, don't you love that? I mean, I'm looking at kind of books. So so me, when I went to school, I love, uh, I hated English. That was not my forte. I, I barely passed like a C or A, and but I love math. I love science. And it's funny how you love the same kind of subjects. Um, and reading books, I hated reading books. We had to read uh, Othello, Shakespeare. And all those books that made no sense. I, Thou shall not kill and all this. Okay, this is saying Spain, plain English. I will not kill, you know. <laughs> so it's funny to hear my son um, enjoying the same things, um, you know, and, and the fact that he loves playing football. And he has something I never had um, at his age. So at 17, while he has the confidence to experience the world and meet people, I didn't have that confidence at all. At 17, I was really trying to just navigate and find myself and fit in. I was really, really hard for myself to fit in amongst uh, people. Um, you know, uh, I grew up in California, he's grew up in Georgia. So obviously demographics are certainly different, but for me, it was, you know, trying to fit in and be black, whatever black was at that time, or try to fit in with this crowd, fit in that crowd and, you know, low self-esteem and how he, my son is five foot nine, 230 pounds. He loves that. When I was his age, 230 pounds was further from my mind. I wanted to be a nice ripped 185 pounds or whatever it was. So I had my six pack abs, but it's great to hear the fact that he's elevating himself above and beyond what I had. So he's actually technically I'm 37. He's let's say almost 17, 20 years, 20 years older than him. And uh, it's funny that he's already has his awareness to life and he wants to experience the world and on the world on a much greater scale. Now the b- biggest thing for him and for me as his dad is to give him the exposure he needs, right? So more exposure, more knowledge, more exposure, more knowledge, more you can experience different things, have different perspective and thought process. It's like a mouthful right now, but hope yeah, it makes sense. It does. <laughs> I was gonna say, are you breathing? Um, I, I love hope so. that. <laughs> I love that he has that that kind of confidence at that age right now because, you know, Ronald, not very many kids your age have the confidence that you have. And I just want to kind of dig in a little deeper there. Where where did that confidence come from? Have you always had it growing up? No, man. Like since like since I was living in California for twelve years, like I used to get bullied. I used to get called names. They used to be um pick at me. They used to be, jump me in the alley and stuff. But like since I came to Georgia, all that changed because I want to be a great person. I want to get my name out there. I want to be on the news and see what I could do growing up. So now like it's so different because I'm getting older. Now people like people now I'm a new school. They respect me because how I am. Yeah. And how how do you get want to get yourself to the world now? What, what do you want? How do you want to make an impact? Is my question. My impact is like show people I can do it, and not not be on the streets. I don't like doing that because growing up I never had none of that stuff to be to be great. So now when I since I got in football, it, everything changed changed now. Like if I'm making a football, I'm gonna own own a tattoo shop. Okay, why tattoo shop? Because I could draw. That's the one thing I could draw. I know how to be. Uh, owner, I know how to respect people, and I know how to um, do everything what people tell me to do. Nice. You're well, you right. never showed me your drawing, so I have no idea that fact that you love to draw. I got a couple pictures on my phone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, send them to me. You got time. Maybe you can design my next tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. I'm considering getting another one. I'm just, I have something in mind. I just need someone to draw it for me. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> um, so he's very artistic, Ron. And mm. did, did he get that from you? No, I mean, I can be very <laughs> strong stick figure. So that's, that's probably got from his mom. Um, you know, she's very artistic and in that kind of that kind of sense. So, I mean, the confidence for sure, I think he got from his mom. My confidence wasn't elevated up until I got an older man and realized, wait a minute here. 
I'm wasting my time and comparing myself to somebody else. And that's where I kind of catapulted my, my mindset and uh, the fact that, wait a minute, I'm comparing myself to everybody else. Why don't I just be myself? And those that like me, like me. Those that don't, don't. And it's completely fine. But as great as his age, he's realizing what he wants to be, doesn't want to be. And I think it's something you said you want to be a football player, right? Yes, sir. And how do you envision yourself being a football player? Me, first first step is go, make sure I go to college. The second step is keep working, working, make my way to NFL and get drafted. Nice. Good. And we were talking about earlier, so you have some schools kind of look at you for a prospect? Yes, sir. You're a, a junior in high school, correct? Yes, sir. And what's your GPA? I think 3.0, 3.0. Nice. I like that. It should be straight A's, but that's okay. I got straight. <laughs> so, um, it, 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 listen to him is that when I was his age, you know, um, uh, so I played football for my sophomore year. I, I tore my meniscus in my right knee. So I was kind of, that's it. You know, take the recovery was not that fun. So I didn't get to play football. And um, the difference between me and him is that I grew up with Jehovah's Witness. So playing sports of any kind outside just the social gatherings with Jehovah's Witness are like Jehovah's Witness self. <clears throat> was shone upon. So while you wouldn't join sports, you wouldn't do any of the things, activities. And all of a sudden, so my sophomore year, I told my dad, I just did it. I was like, dad, join football team. He did what? I just joined football team. Oh, okay. You know, he's like, why? Well, I think that's, so the, with Jehovah's Witness, they always say this biggest acronym is that um, bad association spoils useful habits. So in layman's terms, that means if I associate with people that are not like Jehovah's Witness or like mine, like Jehovah's Witness, then they're going to spoil my habits that I'm getting from going to meetings and um, <clears throat> building a relationship with God. So how he had, had, he got lucky enough to play football. His mom let him play football for, for years, and he's really good at it. I think he also tore his meniscus too earlier, not now. Um, but it's, it's great the fact that he has what I didn't have, and I'm very proud of him because he has something that I wish I had 20 years ago because I think I'd be different. But mm -hmm. it's really ironic the way things really work in life is that your path is not determined. Your path can always change. It's up to you to determine what you want. And just hearing him going to schools. So what, what college do you want to go to? Like, what's your dream college? We'll go by to California, USC. Nice. Nice. Good. And, I'll see uh, you here. Yeah. <laughs> in a few, I'll, I'll see you I'm, here I'm, in a few years. Yes, yeah, sure. So that should be a good school. Um, I have a lot of great engineers out of that school. So I, I'm just like, more or less, I want to get to the, um, the deeper matter. So, you know... It, I wasn't around when you guys grew up, and um, I want to take this point right now is to apologize for not being there. And I, I wasn't there because, you know, I don't feel aware. Your mother and I had you, had you guys, you and your brother, at a very young age. I mean, we're pretty much barely even 25. I just turned 21 when I had you. And, you know, sometimes in life, not, not kind of talk bad about anybody, but people just don't work out. Your mother and I love you guys very much, but for us, I don't think we worked out together. We're just two different people, and you know what? That's kind of how sometimes things work out. And But she did a wonderful job raising you both, um, and that's what I wasn't there. So my question is, how did it feel like when I wasn't there? It's so different having a single parent because I really thought you're going to be in our, uh, be in, be in our life, life for a long time. But me going up is different because... I don't have nobody to teach me what I gotta do to be um be great in life. So for me, I gotta teach myself how to how to discipline myself, respect people, and make sure I have to encourage you to be um be great. Like my brother is different because he's still young. He still had nobody in life to teach him things like to be great. He still got that that um, mindset thing like he could do anything he want. But at the end of the day, it's your choice to be great. It's not my choice to help you to be great and successful in life. But at the end of the day. I, st I still got to be the, uh, the man in the house. Mm -hmm. Ronald, I have a question for you. So you left California at what age again? 12. At 12. And was that the last time you saw your dad in mm. person? Last time no. I saw my dad was three. Wow. Uh, last time I saw my boys in person outside social media was 2008. So if you do the math 12 years ago, yep. So you uh, saw so about almost... It was summertime when we took him to Disneyland. So it's almost yeah, three going on four. So, yeah, it's been a very long time. And that's what I kind of, you know, a son, the truth is, is that your dad had to go through a lot of different things as far as finding himself. Um, and, um, you know, I think the truth is, is that 
I was unprepared to have kids at a very young age. You know, I thought this is was what life for that I wanted, have kids, the white picket fence, you know, the the kind of American dream and, you know, to deal with a family and kids and, and raise them according to the way things, I think things should go in life. You need to have a mature mindset. And I didn't have a mature mindset at, at that age. And I, I, your mom did a better job than I did. I definitely, obviously I support you guys financially, but you know, financially at the end of the day, it's not really all that, you know, you need that, that hug, the kiss, the, the, the person that shows you, how life works or these, these uh, guidance, right? Cause at the end of the day, you're going to be your own person, but to guide you through, you know, kind of the ins and outs of life in general, right? Cause there's a lot of things that can happen unexpectedly. Like, Oh my goodness, how do I deal with this problem? And so I want to take the moment to say, I apologize for not being there, but this is a great opportunity for us and hope you um, can relate to that for us to have a better relationship. I always hoped and prayed that as you became older and you know, became your own person, that we have a better relationship. I think this is the perfect time because while I've done a lot of work for myself consciously and understanding myself and how you need this navigation right now, right? You know, you don't know exactly what you want to do. I mean, you're, you're going to play football and all this stuff, but things change daily. So how you are at 16 will not be how you are at 25 and how you're at 25 is not be how you are at 35, but I'm doing the best thing I can to help navigate you through this life while, you know, I'm here and, and I'm doing my work too. And a, a much mature person to, to guide you. So I hope you accept my apology and we can help build a relationship in the future. So I, I accept it. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, so before I, I do have some questions for Ronald, but before that, so you have accepted his apology. What's your perspective on all this? I, um, it's hard because I really seem like that growing up. So me at this young age, it's like it's different for me because I I'm a, almost about to be seven years old. Because some people I don't have a dad. Some people see the dad since like. Or, or they even born, but me seeing my dad talking to him, being obsessed with his own life, got his own dream is different. It's different because I seen him growing up as growing up as a, as a young kid. So him wanting to be great is that's that's good for me because I want to be great too. So he's an inspiration for you and that's what I'm motivation. Doing. So although he's not with you physically. Um, you have, you know, contact with him and you see him in social media and what he does inspires you to be great. That's wrong. So, and, and you, you did touch something there for me because you said that um, I'm actually very proud of you to even to recognize that there are some who doesn't even have their father around. And you do, even if you, even if he's not with you physically, because I am one of those people. I'm in my forties. I've never, I haven't seen my dad in like, 30 years or something. I've never had the kind of relationship that you have with your dad right now, even though, again, like I said, it might have been not as well in the beginning. Um, you know, you're at least able to talk to him, text him and, and have social media. I don't have any of that. And to these days, I, I don't even know where my father is. And at one point I tried to reach out, but I got to a point where I felt like he doesn't even want me around or he doesn't accept me. But, you know, I, I'm very proud that you recognize that again. And I think that um, this, again, has something to do with um, you growing up and that you had to grow up so fast, you know, not having your father. So at at that age of, let's say, when you moved to Georgia from California, not having your father at a, uh, at a young age around, what did you feel any different from any other kids who may have had their father? I know that having your mom, I'm sure she she's a wonderful mom and it sounds like she raised you really well. And it's not easy raising a child by themselves. But I believe that a man or a boy still needs needs their father around, just like how a girl needs their mom around. And, you know, your mom is there for you. Did you ever feel like at some point you needed your father and you see your friends who has their fathers around? Did you feel any different? A little bit, but I still I still need, need him now to this day. Because so so when I grow up, he's going to teach me. But one day I'm going to see him when I make the NFL. I'll make sure I see him. Well, the reality is you don't have to wait to the NFL. <laughs> um, yeah, you, you don't. Uh, so while you try to navigate this this life, you know, um, 
I moved to Bellingham, Washington. So I saw le- I've left California indefinitely and I'm returning. Um, I think it'll be really great. Uh, once I get settled here, it'd be great for you to come out here, you and your brother, not just you, and to visit me. Um, you know, I know you guys have winter break coming up pretty soon, December, which I think is kind of too soon. Um, but definitely spring break or summertime, uh, we need to um, get our schedules coordinated where I can book your ticket, fly out here, spend time, some time with me because – you know, if you're trying to go to NFL and work out and all that stuff, it'd be great for us to, to have a relationship. You want to experience a different world. You know, living in Bellingham, Washington, you know, 20, 20 minute radius, north, south, east, or west, you can find a place to hike and experience wilderness. And that's probably a little bit different than where you live at right now currently, but you'd be able to be with me. And if the Canadian border is open, which I'm like an hour and 10 minutes away from Canada, we can go to Canada too. So we don't have to wait to the NFL. I mean, we can start building a better relationship now. I mean, why wait? Yourself. But Have don't you, don't you also work. think you guys are already pretty much building your relationship right now? Even yeah, we get better every day. Yeah. As well. I, I totally get. It. I mean, we were talking back and forth. Um, I think uh, eventually what I need to do is um, is um, we communicate over social media, Instagram. But I think what I need to do is get them my phone so they can use and can contact me, call me, text me because sometimes social media. You know, I don't get, you know, with, with Instagram, someone's missing a message, but you don't get anything. At least if it's a text, you get it right away, you know? Or here's my thing about those texting, too, is that I'm, I'm not, you know, Ron, I'm not really totally against that. But when you have a lot to say, sometimes I don't like seeing it through text because <laughs> <That's true. laughs> it, it, it can it can be misinterpreted. You know what I mean? So I, I think. I believe that, you know, you guys are already building a better relationship with each other. And I think, you know, if you can even just talk on the phone would be so much more better. And I think that would be the next step because it has it may not be again in person and not seeing each other, but just hearing each other's voice. It's still it's a different connection and it's going to a different level now of, you know, I don't know if I want to say rebuilding the relationship, but um, just building a better and deeper relationship between a father and a son. Yeah, because, I, I, you know, it's his voice definitely is different than a baby, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> he sounds like you a know. man. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, um, so this is this is going to be a wonderful thing. I just need to figure out how to get you guys a couple of phones, you and your brother for sure, because I'm not the kind of person where I buy you one, not buy your brother, or buy you one and say, hey, share it, because that's ridiculous. I mean, why would you want to share a phone? But you know, <laughs> I, I figure mm-hmm. out a way to so, – so that, I mean, it helps bridges that gap even more, right? I mm-hmm. mean, right now the gap is getting bridged. Bridge meaning is crossing, but um, – it's definitely much better if we can have a conversation because it'd be nice for you to pick up the phone, and give me a call, right? Versus messaging me. And there's a lot of things you probably want to say. Just like Gloria mentioned, that messaging is like, okay, you say something really quick in a sentence or two, and that's it. And it can be misinterpreted and misunderstood. And the more important is that we hear somebody's voice, right? You hear the emotion inside them. So I can hear your emotion inside you versus a text. I'm interpreting my own, my interpreting my own emotion about what you're trying to say. And, you know, and that, that doesn't help anybody. Um, Ron, he mentioned earlier that um, he needed you and he needs you now. How, how did that make you feel? How does that feel for you? Uh, the, the first emotion is that, you know, I can't I don't live in life of regrets. I try not to because it's it's, uh, you know, we always think about regrets as, man, I wish I would have done something better. The reality is there's no such thing as regrets. You only regret things after more knowledge. So after what I felt and the knowledge now, um, I can say I have regrets, but I don't because for me, this is an opportunity, right? So why, not, why say I regret? No, no, great. Let's let's focus our energy all on opportunity we have right now in front of us, which is we have a great opportunity and fantastic that like we learned yesterday from Joy. Yeah. How fantastic is this to build a better relationship with my kids and get to know them better? And when he needs me, he can pick up the phone and call me. Exactly. That's what we talked about. That's what. So, how I feel about it now, that's amazing. How I feel about it then, it's not. It doesn't matter. It's not existent. I can't change the past or go back in time. But what I can do is today. I can't do nothing about yesterday. So, guess what, Ronald? I think you and I will have to bug your father, your dad, to get your phone. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> do you like <laughs> iPhones? iPhones. Maybe you guys can FaceTime even better. Yeah, uh, I don't. I can't Facetime on iPhone because I don't have an iPhone, but we can't Facetime on my iPad or my MacBook. So well, then you suck. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, uh, it, it's okay. um, you know what? I was looking at this earlier because it kept resonating with me, and you know, 
it's like I told Joy yesterday, you know, about Zig Ziglar um, on um, how to live a better life and all this stuff. Um, it's not the fact that I should just do it. But what happens is that, okay, it costs money, right? Because if you think about the iPhone SE, which is the kind of entry-level iPhone, it's about $400, depending on what gig you get starting. And at the same time, you know, I got to buy two, right? I can't just buy one. Mm-hmm. So that makes a big difference there. So, but you know what? I think what's more important is not the price. What's more important is relationship. Mm-hmm. And to get off my laurels, like you said, I say, you guys both need to bug me. Where's my phone? <laughs> Where's my phone? Uh, so I just order and buy because um, right now, you know, when things present yourself in life, like, son, how are you going through all this mindset and change, you know, when life presents you something like right now to me, when I listen to this podcast, talk to you and, and we're, we're kind of gelling the conversations. This is the first conversation we really have had. God knows when, right. And this is like, not just a conversation calling you up. And, you know, if you remember me calling you up years ago uh, about, you know, math problems and two plus two and all this stuff like that, but this is an opportunity and how, what do we do about the opportunity in front of us? That, that's the key, son, is that when you think about this opportunity with myself and with you, what can we do to make this better, right? Why it's kind of uh, has a momentum of uh, positivity and a momentum of uh, growing. How can we grow together? Because, you know, contrary to if you really know, I, I grew up with my dad only. So my my dad, which is your grandfather, he raised my sister and I. So you do have a uh, auntie. Um but my mom was was uh, you know on her own thing, and I think she was going through some problems herself. Like she was too busy chasing man and worried about man and love and putting men before my sister and I, which crushed me for years up until I got to a point where I was an older man saying, "Mom, look, you know, I didn't like the fact that you chose man over my sister, or well, me and my sister, and that crushed me. You know, while you're up here sacrificing for some dude that you don't marry, has no way of making sure you're in a place that he's taking care of you. He's just using you because." So your grandmother was very good looking. Okay. She's almost going to be a supermodel. <laughs> Seven years old and looks like she's in her fifties. She is very good looking and she takes care of herself, right? She's still seven years old and still has a four pack. So, so what that said is that she wasted her good years uh, with men, right? Chasing something that had, had no, no meat to it. When the meat means that it has no substance. Well, right now we have great substance. So let me scale my lowers, get you and your brother an iPhone so you guys can FaceTime me, text me, call me. Hey, son, hey, dad, I'm going through this. Okay, let's talk about it. Because the thing being, the reality is you don't know me. Okay. And second reality is I don't know you. Okay. I can have all these assumptions. I can see, I can think, you know, I can hope, I can dream, I can go based on what your mom has told me. But until you hear it from the horse's mouth or the old metaphor horse's mouth, until I hear from your voice, it means nothing. So this is a great time for us to have a better relationship than we ever had before, because why not? This is a great opportunity for us. So today's kind of like, um, this is kind of like breaking the ice for the both of you. I, I think for me, um, I want to say the first, it's really breaking the ice. Um, I think for a lot of years I had fear and the fear being, okay, what do my kids think about me? Mm-hmm. Second fear being is that how, how I'm going to tell them I'm sorry. Third thing being how I'm going to build a relationship Fourth thing being, how do I get started? <laughs> you yeah. know, so I, I think with this momentum going, this is a great podcast because the fifth thing was more important. And son, just like you, our glory, everybody out there may not have a dad, right? And well, the great thing about this, we have social media, so you can contact me, right? Gloria's case, she cannot find her dad. I mean, and she tried to reach and find her. She has paid thousands of dollars to hire a PI, which is a private investigator, to find him in a different country, which God knows where he is. He's probably hiding from me, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, you know, and that's, that's true because a, a lot of embarrassment is there. Like I told you, I'm embarrassed. Yeah, like, like I'm embarrassed. So, you know, I'm talk too much. But let me, son, let me hear what you have to say about this. It's different because, like, I never, I never say you was a bad dad because I already know you are. You're gonna be successful in life. But without you here, it was different. Cause you know how my mom is. She think like she re- she still wants you to be here in, my, in our life because it's difficult. We're still getting older, and what well, I don't see when I graduate. But I said I'm gonna see you before then. And it's different because I never say you was gonna be a, a bad dad. I never said that because I already know you did everything to uh, for us. Like I not say that for us, but like everything you did and like to be successful. Like you got your own gym. See that's successful. Like many fathers can't do that in life. So Damn. you never you never really said anything bad about him. But growing up, though, I mean, now that you're, you know, older, you're 17, 
uh, let's go back a little bit, maybe just a few years back. Have you ever thought anything? I, I don't want to say like, you know, I, I don't want to ask the question of have you ever felt any hatred, but maybe anything deep there about your dad that he's he's just not around ever thought of like, you know, um, he he left us or he's just not here for us. He doesn't care about us. Anything like that at all. I, I remember I was, I think I was like around 11. I asked my dad, I asked my mom, where my dad at? She said, she said she don't know. That's, that's the only thing I remember. Interesting. So the, the, here, here's the kind of the, the real kind of, I don't know if you heard the story or not, but I just, you know, two sides of the story, son. So you got to... You got change. You got when you look at things, and, and thank you for saying that. I'm trying to be successful because not only do I own my own gym, I've taken a lot of risk in life. I quit my full time job to start a business. I have a business. And I'm starting a second business, um, and that's the way success in life is is taking risks. So, you know, when we're back in in uh, Oceanside, Carlsbad area, when you guys are your kids, um, your mom and I, you know, things didn't weren't working out. Okay. And that's always per perspective, but it wasn't working on my eyes. So I ended up um, really separated. And obviously she was with you guys and I wouldn't had a roommate, not roommate, but I left and I, um, me and a roommate and I, we shared an apartment together, two bedroom, two bath. And I was working at uh, Fry's Electronics at the time. And what really happened is that my store manager was an asshole. Okay. He's a <laughs> short and sawed off son of a bitch. And that's what it, what it boiled down to. He was like five foot two fat, you know, he wasn't getting along, <laughs> right? And the really reality, reality is that, you know, the old saying goes, you have to start smelling, smelling this funk, meaning that he was looking for opportunity to get rid of me, right? Because he couldn't say, oh, he doesn't show up. He doesn't try. He can't say that. So you start doing little things like write me up for one night. I had to go pick you guys up. I had to leave early. He wrote me up because I didn't complete my my uh, task in the department. I had to go pick my son. Well, you should complete your task. You know, you should plan. Right. So he's starting little things. Write me up. Um, so what happened is that when I got an opportunity to leave the store, which is in San Marcos, and um, moved to San Jose, which is Bay Area, for job promotion, I took it because I knew that asshole was waiting for opportunity to fire me because what happened, I wasn't considered his boys. He, he wanted someone to literally bend over backwards, kiss his ass because that's what that's what he thrived on. You know, he, he wasn't charged. He wanted people to kiss his ass. And I wasn't the type of person. I don't kiss anybody's ass. My my pur purpose is really just, hey, my hard work should show my efforts. My efforts should pay off without me having to shout and say how great I am, you know, and that's what it boils down to. So I left San Diego. It was a time I was with somebody else. Her name was Angelina. It was me, uh, her, her four kids, unfortunately. Four kids. Oh, I remember that. I remember it that. Was, uh, you and Isaiah, it was my dad. We all drove to San Jose. Yeah, I remember that. You guys stayed with us for a while, and I had to give you. So what happens is that when it comes to kids, you can't up and just leave. You can't just up and go to a different state without having um, something in writing. Writing means from a judge, from the courts, right? And you just can't right. do that. So what happened is I had to come back to San Diego. And, um, you know, going to the judicial purpose when it comes to kids, it's, it's, it's a painful process. I mean, first of all, you got to file paperwork. Then you have to go see a mediator. The mediator has to come up with her own conclusion the way things are. So the conclusion was with media was that because I worked 100% of the time while she took care of you guys at home, you guys were kids, media deemed she should have the kids. So that's how it went. And I went back to San Jose, and obviously I had a job. I mean, here, here reality is, is you guys need child support. You guys need money. You guys need to survive. She needs money, you know, whatever it may be. So if I stay in San Diego, I could have been fired. So I took advantage of this opportunity to move from San, San Diego to the Bay Area so I can have a better job, paying a little bit more money and new opportunities. I was tired of San Diego. I was tired of all the tumultuous issues, you know, which – I don't, I don't want to hash over things, but things that was going on left and right with, um, you know, everybody down there, I was tired. And when you're tired of a situation and there's opportunity, like I said earlier, I took the opportunity. I just went. And obviously, we can sit here and speculate, well, that was right, that was wrong. Well, it's opportunity. What do you do? You take it. That's just Because I didn't take the opportunity, what can happen? I can have no job, no child support, you know. A lot of things can happen out of that. But so I took the opportunity, and that's what really happens. I lost. I couldn't get full custody of you guys because of the courts, which... It, it didn't feel well, but this is me looking back, okay? This happened in 2006, 2005, when going through this court stuff with your mom. Even though she got full custody, um, it was a benefit. I'll tell you why. I didn't realize working at Fry's at that time, I was working almost, I was working six days a week. And that means from 7 a.m. in the morning to about 7 a.m. at 7 p.m. at night. So I was gone for 12 hours a day. There's an impossibility I'd be able to take care of two boys. 
That's impossible. I mean, you guys need daycare. You guys need to be picked up. You guys need all this. I can take care of family. And then on Saturdays, we have to work nine to five. So obviously now fast forwarding, this time has went by. Um, I look back and say, well, that was a good thing because I was I couldn't be there. I, I physically could not be there. My job created a demand that was so uh, ambiguous that it's not sustainable. And, you know, so she, your mom did a great job raising you guys. Um, and definitely when she left LA to move down to Georgia, it was better for you guys overall, you know, cost of living is better down there. And for you, now you're going to be a professional football player. So that's kind of my end of the story. And I hope that gives you more, um, more, more meat to exactly what happened and what went down and all that stuff, because maybe you just never knew. So hearing all that, how are you feeling right now, Ronald? I feel great. Because now, now I really know that, like, what really happened. Well, I, I'm out of curiosity, right? And it's not right or wrong, or it's not right or wrong. What, what was your perspective before? Before you just heard me now. I heard now that some it was. I the first part y'all say y'all was getting argument. Yeah, that was true. Y'all used to work at the same job. She said that I think it was one night. It was one night that you cheated on her like that, and you um she left. It was, uh, so yes, I did, um, cheating your mom. And um, it was out of fact, not because I didn't care for your mom. I think the reality is I wanted something different. Different, not in terms of sex or anything, but different as far as, I didn't know how to cope with all this. Um, you know, just this whole situation with having kids at a young age, dealing with the grandparents, and I'm gonna go in detail about the grandparents, and all that stuff, but that's a different subject later on. Um, it was not something I wanted. And um, what actually happened is that you guys stayed in some Marco's apartment while I left. She actually lost that apartment because she couldn't pay the rent. And you guys, I think, wouldn't live with um, her great grandmother, if I recall. But by then, it was so fast. I took you guys, I went to San Jose, but I lost custody of it. And that's what really happened. Um, and uh, what actually, what, what really happened is this, and this, this just kind of drove me nuts. And it's only because of now, of then. So um, after Isaiah, your brother was born, you're, you know what paternity leave is? No, sir. So that was when after a woman has kids, she goes on leave. So when a woman's going to have a baby, let's say a gestation period of a baby is nine months. We start getting to this third trimester, which is like the last three months of the, having a kid, you go on maternity leave, which is, you know, let's say week, two months out, and you need to go on maternity leave because of whatever. So she went on maternity leave. And... Um, she, um, you know, she worked at Toys R Us at the time, and then she, at the maternity leave, they can't fire you from your job. You get your job back. It may not be the same position, but you get your job back with the same amount of pain and everything. So she went to her job. What happened? I don't know. I know is I came home. I said, hey, why are you home? And she says, well, um, I quit. I said, so how'd you quit? She says, they don't like black people. And at then I was done. Uh, for me, it was like, okay, well, we're going to, we're struggling here to make ends meet, um, you know, raising two kids and, you know, any money helps, Right. It doesn't matter about if it's eight bucks an hour, 20 bucks an hour, a thousand dollars an hour, any money helps contribute to the overall. Then I was kind of, no, oh, I, I can't take this anymore. It's just too much pressure on me. So that's kind of my side. So, I mean, it, it's, it's, so now you have two perspectives, which I hope is hopeful for you. Because uh, as you get ready to live this, this life that you want to live, new perspectives, meeting people, it's more important to you always ask curiosity question because everybody's journey, everybody's perspective is totally different. Your perspective was only based upon what you experienced and what you were told. Now you gain a third perspective outside which mom told you what you think, not from your dad. You know what, though, what I um, am seeing here is that although, um, like what you said, he had a different perspective about you and now he's hearing your side of the story, I think. Even though we all think that way, and I think, Ron, um, you and I had talked about this once, and I've told you that as they get older, both of them, they'll, you know, they'll have, like Ronald here right now, he's getting to that age where he's becoming to be a man, and he has his own life, and he's understanding what life is about now, but I think deep down, he's always had that, those feelings and thoughts of you not, you know, based on not what he hears from others or you know as much as he wants to maybe at one point look at you and say my father my dad doesn't care about us but deep down that's not what he was feeling so as you can see as he got older he never really had any of those thoughts that you thought 
maybe, or you assume that he would think that way towards you, right? Yeah, and, and the funny thing about life, we always have these uh, uh, perceptions, interpretations of what we think. And that's exactly what has happened your sons that have this perception of, well, how am I going to navigate this? And what are you thinking about me? And how do I kind of navigate what you may think? And, and I, I should, damn, I should have picked the phone and had a conversation. Mm-hmm. And I there would have been you, a missing Phone call is always better than messaging. Oh, heck yeah, it is, of course. <laughs> so, yeah, so you need to get him a phone. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think, uh, well, I need to know what's really close by your house. I know there's a Walmart and uh, it's probably Best Buy. Is there an Apple store? Mm. Is there an Apple store? No, sir. That means if it's an Apple store, we got to go on all the way to Carrollton. Okay, so basically anything that comes to your shop, house has to be shipped, correct? Yes, sir. And how's security about shipping stuff to your house? That what you mean. Security means that the people still packages. Is there a lockbox for it? What happens? Oh, they, they'll put it in our front door. But if it's in your front front door, meaning that they have keyed your... Okay, front door means it's on your doorstep. So when you walk home, it's right there on the doorstep before you walk into the house? Yes, sir. So right there, someone can steal it, correct? Oh, it's not... No, nobody out here is still... It's like, it just, I'm not being... It's just all white people out here. They don't even come outside. <laughs> okay so that that's why i'm asking that because the way it looks like i don't i don't want if i order something that is costly you know i don't want to get stolen and we have to file a complaint and all this stuff that's just a nightmare they ain't gonna steal it good glad to hear that so i will do some research today and see if i can get you and your brother a, a phone so we can have a better relationship okay yeah you know what i see here though is that i don't think you guys are kind of starting over it's almost like you guys are kind of just continuing to sort of where you guys left off i call it the beginning of the end and i'll break it down by very layman's terms some something needs to end for something to begin and beginning of the end means that right now what began was a journey that was kind of scattered but as ending and a new beginning is happening so whatever journey my son had prior to us having a better relationship is that journey has ended and a new journey is again. So it's the beginning of the end, end of the old journey, but the new beginning of a new journey. Right. So Ronald, what made you to just one day decide to reach out to your dad? I think it was one day I was using my uh, auntie phone and I, had, I wanted to create an account on Instagram. And I know I just saw his, saw his Instagram profile. So I, I click on it and I say, is that really my dad? And I click and I say, hey, dad, it's wrong. That's when I really, really start talking to him. What did you feel? Um, so you heard back from him and, you know, what did you feel? How did it feel for you? I feel like, yeah, that's really my dad. I thought it was just like a random person I didn't know. <laughs> 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 and then so since then you know you've continued on this you know um contact with him and just messaging back and forth but now it, it seems like it's it's getting deeper like to a deeper level um how did that come about for you i mean it's getting better each day every, like every time i talk to him again way better like our relationship really getting stronger you feel it do you like it? Are you enjoying it? <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and I like this because, you know, Ron, he's at that age right now where hey, he might need somebody to talk to about a girl. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, and that, that's certainly true. I, I think at this point, uh, you know, I would not like to see my sons get any girl pregnant. Um, I'm quite sure at this point in life, I mean, I have no <laughs> – <laughs> your granddad – and that's going when I was your guys' age. He avoided talking about girls and avoided talking about sex, avoided talking about masturbation, avoided everything. The only thing he ever said to me when it came to contraception was, uh, just don't bring up any babies. And Dean was like, you know, because my mom had to pressure him to talk about sex. He, didn't want to, he would have avoided it. And the only thing he says, a son, you know, you're going to mature, maturity and, you know, you're going to have a little hair there and this. And that was it. I mean, he was really petrified of talking about it. So, <laughs> uh, and he passed away five years ago. So I, I would never be able to ask him why. But I think of that generation, born in the fifties. He didn't, his parents talk about it, so he didn't talk about it. But I think for me is let's talk about it. What's there to hide? Because either I say something about it and they trust me, or they're going to find out from somewhere else. And you go on social media, you go on Google, you go on whatever. You can find a thousand different things and. 
And sexuality and sex is really just a part of being a human being. Right. That's the way people should love. That's the way people connect. Um, and obviously at his age, it's really easy to fall in love and all that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, I, I don't want to see him, you know, I wouldn't say his life is ruined, but I'd like to see him prosper in his life more. So we got to talk about this and let's talk, let's talk about it. So Ronald, do you have a girlfriend? No, ma'am. That's good. You don't need to have one right now. <laughs> <laughs> you need you need to focus first. But I, I see that he's very, Ron, um, Ronald here is very, he's determined. He knows what he wants in life and he's very focused. And he has, Ronald, you know, you have a really good balance um, academically and physically. Not very many people can balance both. And let me tell you, when I was in high school, I, so I play volleyball. In high school, I was all about playing volleyball. I couldn't wait till practices. I couldn't wait till our games or our competition to where my homework, everything was just being put on the side and I was waiting till late. And, you know, in high school, you have to have a certain grade point average to play the sports, right? right. And I was at a point where I would barely make just enough just so I could play. And so I didn't have that balance and, and you do. And that's, I think, another thing that Ron, you know, should really be proud of, of seeing you and hearing this from you right now. And I think that even if, Ron, you're not there with him or with both of your boys physically, you were with them sp spiritually. Somehow you have have inspired them and motivate them. And even with Ronald to be who he is today and where he is right now and to, you know, even going further from where, where he's at. And that's amazing. Um, and that's why I think uh, I saw the, the movie Social Dilemma. And it, they're obviously only talking about the bad attributes in the future, but there are good attributes. If, if I didn't have social media, then how would we connect? If I didn't have social media, how would I inspire my son? Right. I mean, so there are some good attributes. You know, I think life has... Uh, I don't want to say good or bad, but life has some 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 good some opportunities and some not so good opportunities, as I would say. But it's really great to the fact that he reached out to me via social media because obviously that's a point in his life he wanted it. And now, if he never done that, it would be where we are today. See, so you know, you guys had never really lost that father son kind of connection or relationship. It might have just only been put on hold for a while. Um, but you guys have always had it there. And, you know, unlike, like what Ronald said, he recognizes that unlike some people, they don't have that. They don't have that type of relationship with their father or with their mother. You know, it's it's been lost. Like, you know, even if there's social media and if I try to reach out to my father, I mean, I've emailed him. Have I gotten any response? No. So for all these years, I've never really had any type of relationship with him. Unless, yes, child support, but after child support, when it was done, it was done. Um, you know, and so I, I still think that it's always been there and you guys had never really lost it. Now I think it's a time to just kind of get to know each other, who you are now and who you are today. I, I totally agree to that. And I'm very, very happy to see this from both of you and, you know, and with the other, your other son, Isaiah, coming into the picture as well, I think that would be wonderful for, for you, Ron, and, you know, for the two boys. Um, I always say that every boy always needs their father around. They really, really do. And I say that I have two boys too, Isaiah. I mean, um, Ronald, I have, I have two boys and I have a great, great relationship with them. Um, and why I'm so thinking about this phone, I know a lot of people probably don't agree with that because I, they both have one, but because I, a lot of the times I, when I'm not around them, then my oldest son who is 14 um, or will be 14, he'd sometimes just call and just say, um, you know, just ask questions or just tell me like, oh, this is what happened at school today. And I love that. And that's one thing I love about, you know, the boys. And I think that, you know, with, with Ronald, if he's able to do that with you, Ron, that would be, I think, wonderful. I, 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 why not? I mean, that's what I'm saying. Getting them some easier way to communicate with me. 
would be the best way. Hey, son. Hey, dad, I'm going through this at football. This is what happened. Let's talk. Right. I mean, because just this hearing that will give him probably a lot of ease, too, for his own for his own life. Right. He has someone to talk to. Yeah. Because everybody goes through something different. And just like, you know, this a simple explanation for certain things is if you have a mom and a dad, your mom may say yes, your dad will say no. So you always go to your mom, you always get yes. <laughs> yeah. So let's, let's reverse that scenario in how you may go to your mom for certain things, but other certain things may just come to me. I, I don't know, right? That, that's a possibility. Or you may feel more comfortable around your dad than you do your mom, right? So, uh, or just better solution to, to a, a, a problem. You know, I, I don't know. So those are things we will find out. So how are you feeling today, Ronald? I can talk to my dad like it's like, Oh, I'm talking 45 minutes. It's been great. So that's probably one of the longest, longest uh, time we talk. Is this, would you say, something that, and you can be honest with us here too, um, something that you've been longing for? Yes, for a long time. Gee, and it's here. Yep. It's like about time, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm happy to be a witness to this. I think this is wonderful. This is really, really great. It's very touching. Um, and you know, this is, it's just one of those that doesn't happen all the time. It's either you have it good or you have it bad. And I hope like, I only wish the best for both of you. I really, really do. And, and Ronald, like most, especially you, you know, where, um, I feel that you will succeed and accomplish what you want in life because I could see in hearing, hearing you talking about it, you're very determined and just keep walking that path that you feel like, you know, wherever it's leading you to, whether it be, you know, playing football in college and all the way up to NFL, you will make it, you will, and you just stay focused. And I see that you really are, you know, it makes you wonder one important thing is that um, so the, you don't know a lot of history about, you know, my side of the family. Right. But I'll kind of tell you a tidbit right now. I think mindsets, determination are sometimes genetic. And because, you know, certain you wonder why you can have two kids of the same parents, but one turns out completely opposite of another. And that, that really just happens naturally. So my dad grew up very poor. So this is your grandfather. And they're very poor. I mean, in Chicago, in the projects, 10 brothers and sisters. They were living in roach-infested places. They had no money sometimes. They, you know, they had no way to uh, eat. Um, and he hated it. He just hated being poor. He just hated the fact that his dad always spent his, his money on chasing horses. Horses mean gambling. So back in those days, you didn't have slot machines, right? You have horses. So he, him and my mom, which is your grandmother, took the opportunity and left Chicago, the ghetto and all that was $5,000 in the pocket. Now we're talking about in 79, which $5,000 goes a long way. Moved to California, new opportunity. And he owned, uh, I think, three businesses. One I remember for sure because I worked there. So you can see the fact that even though I'm not there with my son, my dad had a disdain, good work ethic and perseverance. And that's the same attribute that I have. The reason I was able to be successful in what I have right now is that I have a, an undowing, unpronounced work ethic and perseverance. I know I can. Now, sometimes fear gets in the way and you're uncertain what to do, but most of the time, you're all freaking okay. And I can see that in my son. He, he has a great work ethic and determination that he will be something, right? And and obviously, I think it's genetic. My dad left Chicago to start a business, to do California for a new life. Um, obviously, I left California recently to go to Bellingham, Washington. Um, but the determination of work ethic and perseverance, I think is encoded genetically because my dad has, has it, had it, I have it. Now my son has it. Damn. It's that Johnson blood. I, you never know <laughs> at this point. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it is, you know, and so it, it's, it's really, really good. Yeah, it is. It's really, it's, it's great. And I'm telling you, Ron, and just hearing him talk about it and, you know, just you talking about your your goals ronald i i could feel it that you're very determined and you know what you really want and i think you know i believe you will get there and you have something inside you that will make that happen 
and I could feel it. And I think that also, is that a part of that? Is there an inspiration behind all this or motivation? Yes. What is that? Right. Having the mindset, that's good. Be successful is more the key, key thing to be in life. Where did that all that come from? Like, it's talk, hear my dad talk about it and hear other people, hear other people inside my family talk about it. And what is something that I said that kind of resonated with you? It's like, you just working hard and being great. But is there something I said? It, what kind of what kind of stick, sticks out to you in your mind? So I'm trying to ask. It's being successful, like going to poor, you can have nothing, being that dark hole like everybody. Is. That's 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 my thing. Be motivation. Amazing. Wow. I didn't know but that. You see, Ron, what happened here is all those years that you thought those things that you tell him you don't know where it was going, right? You don't know how he was feeling towards you or for you when you tell him certain things that something that he might not like, it's something that he, something that he might not want to hear. But now you know that deep down he was hearing it and he was listening to it. It, it, it's inspiring. Um, you know, mm-hmm. I talked about this plenty of times. We talked about different things. And you know what my objective in life is, is to really change the world and, and impact life on a great, greater scale. And it, it's really funny is, is you know, we're, we're thinking about globally. I'm going to impact someone in China. I'm going to impact someone in America, whatever. But really, the people that have the best impact are people closest to you, but you just don't know it. Like, you don't know who's watching your social media. You don't know who's listening to your YouTube videos. You don't know who's doing what. But now it's like, dang, you know what? That is really paying off. Mm-hmm. It, it really is. And Ronald, you know, we have a lot of, gosh, like kids your age probably or even younger listening to our podcast. And they will be listening to this and they will hear you and hear your story and hear your determination. You, you'd be inspiring them. And you, right now, you will be and you are already making an impact to you know, kids and people your age. So, you know, it's been almost an hour in our podcast, and I, I'm kind of curious now, as we get ready to end, what is one thing you would say? Like, I, I want you to be yourself, say what you need to say right now in this moment. What would you say to me, to Gloria, and to people that are going to listen to this podcast? Mm-hmm. I want to say, I want to, I want to see both of y'all in person. That's one thing about Let's see both of y'all in person. I'd of course, be happy I to see you in yeah. person. Yeah. And you know what? Better yet, I mean, I would love to meet you and your brother. Um, and better yet, Ron, I have a great idea. Maybe one day when we do see each other in person, we can do this live. I why not? Let's do it live. Yes. Uh, and and um and Ronald, I have um like I'm being touched right now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm a very emotional wreck sometimes, um, but I do laugh at myself. And I think that one day when, no, not when you do, when you're up there playing in college, I will be there to watch you. Thank you. NFL, what's your favorite team? Seahawks. Ah. <laughs> I'm a Tom Brady fan, so um, yeah, I'm, a, I'm a really big Tom Brady fan. But whatever team it is, I don't care how old I am, Ron, mark my words, I will be there to watch him. Well, thank you. <laughs> Why not? And I will be I'll be sporting a Johnson jersey. How about that? Of yeah. course, better. <laughs> I don't care if it's Seahawks. <laughs> I'm just not a big Seahawks fan, but I, I like um, Russell Wilson, um, though. <laughs> yeah, he's good. I think they play today, by the way, anyway. So that's kind of yes. Yes. So, so is there anything else you'd like to add to that, Ronald? Yeah, just like me talk to my dad and y'all more make me want to be talk to somebody else about it. I'm kind of confused. Can you give more detail on that? What do you mean? Like... Y'all talking about a lot. I want to hear uh, uh, people outside the story, how they feel about it. And I have a date on that in life. 
Yeah, I mean, technically right now, you got the computer, you have the, the, the personality. You can actually start your own podcast. Mm-hmm. You can. You start your own on vlog videos. You can do whatever you want in this world. You know that, right? You just got to figure out what you want to do. Yes, sir. And, and you know, um, let me just um, get, I don't know how Ron would feel about this, but let's forget about Ron for a minute here. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, whenever you feel like, you know, I know that you're now at a point where you, now you know you can reach out to your dad. Whenever you feel like anything that you want to talk about with him, you can. Let me put this out there for you. You can also reach out to me. And although we have never really met each other in person, um, I've heard so much about you and your brother in a good way. And now just even just within this hour of um, listening to you and just hearing you, I feel like I already know so much about you even more. You know, so I feel... I don't want you to get freaked out, but I feel a little closer to you in a good way. <laughs> I know. Um, but, you know, don't hesitate to reach out to me if there's anything you'd like to talk about or say. I am reachable. Your father knows my phone number or I do have social media as well. You can find me there and then, you know, just message me and I'd be happy to be there for you as well. And I think the more... The more guidance and support you have, the better it is for you. That's certainly true. And the more support you have, the more freedom of your mind you have. Because the more support you have, the less you got to think about who to talk to. And the less you got to think about is I'm afraid of sharing my story. I'm afraid of being myself. When you talk to people about it, it actually frees up more space in your mind so you can actually be more creative and intuitive. So I, I know as we end this in the podcast... I, I just can't wait to, to build a better relationship with my kids. I can't wait to what this world has offer, offered me. Deep down inside, I didn't say this earlier, I always had a gut feeling that I would come a point in life when they would need me the most. When that point comes, it seemed like it has come now. And I knew um, deep down inside, your mom has got you guys very far in life. And now it's my turn to get you to the next level. And I can see already you and your brother have the mindset to get to the next level and now how to push you to the next level. Because you may look at it and say, okay, I want to get there, but how do I get there? And by talking to someone that has experience, because the best way to get to get to the next step or next level is no different than you practice with somebody in football that's better than you. If you practice mm -hmm. one that's better than you, you in turn get better. If you hang out with people better than you mentally, physically, emotionally, you in turn will get better. It's just how natural selection works and vibrations work. So um, but if you ever need some books to read, um, don't hesitate, reach out to me or send me a link because I know. Books are, have no, a lot of knowledge that I'm glad I'm a part of right now in my life. So uh, thank you, son, for making this a, a great time for myself. It's really definitely put myself at ease with a lot of things that I've been thinking about over the last couple of years. Um, I definitely will look forward to us having more conversations than via podcast. Um, you know, it's just a great story. Um, I look forward to just building better relationships with my kids and, and obviously making making the point that they come out here and visit me and, and we grow together because uh, this is the right time. And I'm going to take a huge, I'm going to take solely, I'm um, sorry, I'm going to take the bull by the horns. I mean, I'm going to control it and I'm going to take the opportunity that the universe and God has presented in front of me. This is an opportunity. I'm going to take advantage of it. So um, as always, hold on. Go ahead. Before we end this, I'd like to to hear what Ron Ronald has to say to you and Ron, what you have to say to Ronald. You can start with Ronald. I want to say thank you. Thank you. Just for being here. I know you don't be here in person, but just thank you for like we we um reaching reaching back to me. And I and I, and I want to say thank you for forgiving me for not being there because that has been weighing on my shoulders for a lot of years. I mean you're 16 now, so you can only imagine, you know, it's been decades on my, not decades, but over a decade on my shoulders. Like, what should I do? How am I going to do this? And, you know, uh, the old adage is out of sight, out of mind. So if you don't think about it, it's not there. But obviously, uh, it has been there in back of my mind as I haven't given this opportunity to pursue it. And this was a perfect opportunity to pursue this. And I look forward to building a better relationship with you and your brother and look forward to us communicating more on a regular basis. You know, give me a call. So I'm going to start looking at, okay. What kind of iPhone, what kind of phone can I get you guys to, to make sure you guys can give me a call? So that's that's on my plate right now. This is so touching. <laughs> I, I, you know what? In a way, I'm kind of glad it's not in person because I would be in so much tears right now if it was in person, you guys. 
I, I, like, I like to see you cry. <laughs> <laughs> I cry like a little baby. Yes. <laughs> I really do. And, and I'm glad that this is really happening. I'm glad that I'm a witness to this and that I am here listening to both of you and that this is just what Ronnie said, like the start of the beginning of the end. What did you say again? I forgot. Beginning, beginning of the end. Beginning of the end. And I love this. I love seeing this um, and hearing this from you guys. So um, I do wish both of you luck um, and just going forward with this and with with Isaiah also um, and Ronald. Um, I am looking forward to meeting you in person and your brother one day. Maybe, Ron, you can fly them down here to California. Or, sure, why not? Yeah, or you can... Or the funny thing is my friends and I was just talking about going to Georgia. Maybe one day I'll come visit Georgia. Maybe you can join too, Ron. Yeah, why not? I'm open for that. Yeah. All right, son, I love you. And I'm always here for you. So if you need anything, do not hesitate to reach out to me, okay? Thank you. Bye.